Hi everyone, we're again in Pink Sofa Conversation, this time with Lauren Neely. How are you, Lauren? Yeah, I'm good. Really good. How Thank are you? you for joining us. I met Lauren in Bau Art. We were both in the same uh, venue, having an art studio. Her discipline is similar to mine because we're both painters, but the object and how we paint and with the medium that we paint is quite different. Me, uh, Lauren, can you give us an, an introduction of your current practice, what you're doing, and also your background? Because you 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 are a, you studied arts basically, so you have a you have a BA in in fine arts. Yes, I do. Um, yeah, I studied in um, in Boston in the U.S. and then I moved back here and I sort of restarted my practice. Um, and the past couple of years, I've been focusing mainly on the female figure. Uh, I've been using um, contempt. I say contemporary. I've been using recent pornography to, um, to as the basis for my work. Um, and it's interesting because it sort of sort of isolated the figure and it gives a much more of a sort of a throwback feel of uh, sort of a pinup vibe to the to the images and in a way i think it's actually more empowering than your everyday porn that i'm yeah. looking that i'm looking at which my browser history is now destroyed forever <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah so I was doing women for a very long time, and I've moved on to men now. Um, and it's got a it's because a different tone to it. It's it's interesting having to turn the volume up for women, and I'm having to tone it down for men to sort of get the same sort of um, sleek and poignant um, expression. But um, yeah, it's a really interesting series right now. I'm absolutely loving it, um, and I'm getting I'm trying to get a couple done uh, a week. And yeah, so far so good. Great, because I did, when I spoke to you, I told you, where do you get these models from? Because they're very sensual, but it thought it doesn't look like porn. So when you told me it was porn, it blew my mind. I, I said, I couldn't believe it. So it's very interesting that you're taking those moments in those movies where actually the body pose and the dynamic is quite ambiguous and relaxed. It seems like you're taking a picture of someone in there every day, changing clothes, going to the shower. Yeah. I think you've nailed it actually, like it's the relaxed element of it because there is, you know, there's so much, there, well, it sounds so terrible, yeah, but there is a buildup in any narrative, but especially in porn, you're like, you you know what the fun trend's going to be, you know what you're, where <laughs> What's you're going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> but no, but I do, I take these moments from, from these narratives and isolate them and it actually gives for a totally different vibe, which you wouldn't expect as a yeah. viewer. Um, for, for these to be derived from where they where they have come from. Yeah. So that's yeah. My models are very interesting and very dynamic. Yeah. And you are actually you were born in Paris, so you're French, but your parents are American. You've been in Boston, now in London. You speak multiple yeah. languages. I was asking you before about your palette and the colors that you use, and you see an influence there. And also maybe tell us about the medium that you use and the reason of why you're using oil painting. Sure. So I think I think there's a lot to be said for color palette. From where from where someone comes from, you can tell a lot. You can tell a lot by where they've grown up by the colors that they use. I think personally, um, for me, yes, Paris, London, uh, and the Northeast in the in the U.S. Those are all very urban. Slightly, they've got more umbers. They've got. Yeah deeper grays, really warm, sort of a, a warm neutral palette. Whereas I think people from, you know, Southern Southern Europe, um, Midwest or the West Coast in the United States, um, the palette is really different. So I think actually where you're from is where your palette is like sort of, you can tell by your palette. I think it's a dead giveaway for me anyway. Um, so yeah, I would say that echoes of where I'm from come through in the painting mainly through color um, and light. Um, I uh, I only use oil paints. Um, I absolutely love the medium. It's so it's really saturated, silky, beautiful, velvety colors that you can like play with the the speed of drying, which can give you interesting textures and just really vibrant colors. So that, that's why I sort of 
a married to oil paint. <laughs> yeah, because I've always known you doing oil paint. There was a time where you were doing some autobiography, more like self portraits back then in yeah. in Bal Art in your in your studio. And now you're working on paper. I think that's that's very interesting because most of the times we see oil on on canvas. On paper, I guess it dries faster and it makes it more dynamic. But I guess the paint also yeah. looks different. There's a little difference in the the final outcome. And paper, although it's more of an everyday consumer material, there are such beautiful, tangible qualities to paper that you don't necessarily get with um, uh, canvas. Um, like when I hang when I hang the paintings, especially like in fairs and whatnot, I usually just hang them with clips. And you can see when people walk by them how they like gently like float off of the wall. And there's just like an amazing tactile expressiveness to paper that you don't get from canvas. So. Although, I, and as, as I mentioned to you before, I started working on paper because I ran out of canvas. Um, it was the most beautiful accident I've ever made, and I actually don't know if I'm ever going to be able to comfortably go back to canvas, because I love the paper so much. Yeah, no, I can I can see that some of us as artists, there's accidents or circumstances that push you into different uh, directions that you would not have normally not taking, and then something beautiful, a great result comes out. Lauren, totally. we're all at home now in quarantine. You have your art studio at home, which is great. Um, but how do you see the world is going to change? How can artists contribute to that change? What is your take on that? Yeah, it's crazy. Um, I only just moved into this home studio um, like a couple of weeks ago. Um, so I am incredibly thankful to be able to still have my work active. Um, how it's going to change artists' work and the way that they work, I don't know. It's going to be hard though. And I, for me, my biggest question has been how is this going to impact the psyche of our culture, how is this going to impact the psyche of the generations that are living right now, the ones who are like, you know, really well established and like the newer generations coming up, what is it going to do to people's minds? That is what's really, you know, driving me and I'm just actually thinking one direction I might move in is most of my figures in my paintings are quite isolated and bringing them together might be an interesting thing to do and I think actually there's that magnetism all of a sudden. I've gone from being quite an isolated, solitary person um, anyway, and now I have this draw, this energy that I really, is almost uncontainable of wanting to see other people. And you know, it, it's just, I can't describe it, but yeah, I'm slowly going crazy. <laughs> I think everyone, now that we can't go out, we want to go out desperately. I, I, yeah, totally. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's a lot of, um, there's a lot to be said around art being healing for the soul and for the mind. Yeah. And I agree with you. I think mental health, it was already to be burnout, to be stressed. It was already seen as an epitome for this uh, generation. It's one of the biggest reasons that people actually uh, get sick and unwell. And it's proven uh, by the World uh, Health Association. It's been said and we know it. But now I think it's going to be even more exaggerated. And maybe then artists doing workshops or being interactive or teaching painting, maybe yeah. we can play a role there. Yeah, absolutely. That's super interesting. I think that would be, yeah, I think we'll see some really interesting, innovative ways to engage with each other and to learn from each other from this. So yes, although it is it is scary and it's a weird time, I think that we will see some really interesting things come from this sort of self-isolation period. Yeah. And Lauren, yeah. to finish up, um, what future projects do you have? You've given us already a little bit of a hint with maybe putting figures together, but also give us an, uh, a couple of uh, names because you're quite you're quite out there. Like you're in galleries, your your art is being seen. You have an online shop. How can people contact you and see what you're doing to buy your art? Oh, okay. So, well, I'll start with the future projects. Yes, I did give a little bit of a hint there. I am going to start putting some figures together. I think. It means a whole new, uh, whole new episode of my browser history. <laughs> it's just dangerous. Um, <laughs> but so yeah, that's sort of that's on the that's on the top of my mind at the moment for next steps for me in my own practice. Um, have not having engaged with galleries or art fairs for a couple of months. It's like I told you before, I've taken a break, um, and now that I'm getting back into it, I think. My main motivation is going to be just producing a ton of work. 
Um, and the best way um, to follow uh, and to keep up with what I'm doing is to follow me on Instagram. That is, uh, for better or for worse, the best platform to follow me on. Um, and I have a link in my bio to available works and price lists. And you're always welcome to reach out to me on um, social media or, you know, email. Yeah. yeah easiest way. Do you, just to finish up, I don't know, it's not a question, I'm just curious, Adley, do you take commission work? If someone sends you a picture, would you do a portrait? Because I can see this being something that could also be an angle for you. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right, it is. And yes, I do take commissions, but um, it has slowly gone from someone asking me to do something to now it, I require for it to be more of a collaboration and to there to be more of an engagement. Um, just because there are there's some imagery that will work fantastically and there's some that might not but either way it's an open conversation so yes I'm always open for a chat about commissions if that's something that you're interested in fantastic <laughs> Lauren thank yeah. you so much uh, we leave you to your art studio to keep on doing your amazing paintings we'll add your link to your Instagram and your website and everything on the description of this um, video so that people can reach out. Thanks for making time for us today. Thank you. Bye. Bye.